Hello everybody, welcome to Live Scribbles with Jonathan. You can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. Thank you once again everybody that was here uh, during... We like the... I'm wondering if I should come up with a different name. It's called the pre-show, but it's not... All it is is I'm just making sure I'm getting all the, the bugs and the kinks are all out of the way. And I'm trying to uh, hammer through a picture very quickly. And uh, just to, you know, all that kind of stuff. So uh, we were listening to some Johnny Cash this time and uh, doing some stuff. We were drawing, uh, actually, this little thing here, quick little Spider-Man. I'll post this online so you guys can check it out. You guys can see a little bit more of the, the art. Not that it's amazing or anything like that, uh, but I do enjoy... Sometimes, you know, I'm, I actually am, I don't want to say impressed, I'm always, I'm always conscious of that, it makes me feel like I'm saying something that's more <laughs> impressive than it's not, but uh, I encourage you guys, let's, let's just spit it back to you guys, I encourage you guys to try, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this today, but uh, get in the mode of like crunch time, like give yourself like 10 minutes, and see, and don't even really know where you're going to go, uh, I, I, I just ended up turning this into Spider-Man. I wanted to try to draw like this sort of thing here, this this uh, like stretched out torso sort of thing. And we did this what 12, 15 minutes, something like that. But uh, yeah, I encourage you guys to try that out. And if you guys are interested, uh, like I say, uh, this show is every Wednesday from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, if you're catching the recorded version and all that on YouTube, that's cool uh, and all that good stuff. So if you wanted to make it a little early, chat with the people in the chat room. And I get some conversation going. That'd be great. And I want to say thank you again to, obviously, everybody that supported me on Patreon. You guys are the best. Uh, don't really want to talk about updates on that because I know we talk about it every week. However, for those of you that are, are watching right now on YouTube or uh, watching live right now, um, excuse me, any kind of help that you guys are able to give with, like, likes, shares, retweets, all that good stuff, thank you so much for doing that and if you haven't uh, if you wouldn't mind doing that that'd be great I really do appreciate the support and uh, every little thing like that actually does go very very far and uh, helping spread you know spread the love and all that good stuff but anyway let's get into what we're doing today so I was sort of torn I'm like I don't know what to do today I don't know what, what to do with you guys what, what, what are we gonna draw what are we gonna do and I was batting around some ideas of doing some concept art uh, for Jessup King the webcomic I'll be starting and then I figured, you know, I don't know how many people would be into that. And then I was thinking, well, maybe we could keep doing pages. And I think that's great. Um, but I don't want to do any of that until I get some of this concept stuff done. So it's sort of stuck where we're going to go. But uh, then I just looked through the to-be-done pile of, <laughs> of work that uh, when, I, when I'm able to squirrel away some free time, I slowly hack away at those things that need to get done. And one of them is a commission piece, which we're going to do today for, uh, actually, I don't even, I don't think he's in the chat right now, but if he's watching, that'd be great. Uh, our good friend Lars, uh, he's commissioned me to do a Batman versus Red Hood uh, illustration. So that'll be on 11 by 17 Bristol. If you guys remember, uh, if you go back or if you've seen it, there's a couple videos I was posting of uh, Star Wars that I did uh, with Mara Jade and Jaina Solo. And uh, I'm going to be doing the exact same uh, method for that as well. Let me just save this here. I want to make sure that uh, I don't lose it. So let's just save that. Um, yeah, so what the method is, the method, <laughs> close this up. So this is what we've got so far. Um, I I swear to God, I need like some sort of pop-up that comes up just to show this book because I talk about it every freaking week. But uh, the DC Comics Guide to Digitally Drawing Comics. Uh, Freddie talks about um, something that I've actually been doing heavily with all of my personal projects uh, or just work in general, which is batching. Um, I did notice actually this week uh, where I work at my day job uh, for doing concept art for video games that uh, it actually, it's it's something that's in the natural pipeline for production work. And I, I think uh, there's a little bit of difference when it comes to people that are doing, we will start drawing, I don't want to just ramble and do all that stuff, but this production production mentality that it's a little hard to get into. Uh, and not everybody works this way, but I do see a lot of benefits with it. Um, what it is, is you break down essentially what the project or work or task is that you need done into groups of these chunks so that the the whole of it can be seen at any time for the most part and uh, addressed at that stage. So what does that mean? What the hell does that mean? Well, Freddie, anyway, in the book, what, how he does it for comics, and I'll sort of quickly relate it for concept art because, uh, you know, I think there are people that are interested in both, but for comics, uh, 
break it down to as little as you can do for each stage. So let's just say um, I'm going to go through the whole thing like inking, okay, that I would normally do as well. If you just do penciling, this works for you. Just skip the inking stage. So thumbnails, batch your thumbnails. So what does that mean? Maybe you want to work in batches of five pages or 10 pages or the whole book, a 22 page book. I recommend, let's say five pages. Um, if you're able to do a page a week, that's great. Or sorry, a page a day, that's great. If not, that's fine. So in terms of this, we'll just use five pages. So what you would do is you would thumbnail five pages, right? That would be the first thing you do. That's the only thing you do. You do not touch pages until the, that batch of work is done. So the first thing would be five batches of thumbnails. Right, for five pages. Then once all those are done, then you would do the roughs. And what you're looking at right now is the, this is really a thumbnail blown up and I started to do the roughs here. Um, but what we're gonna do is one more pass of roughs because there's there's elements on here that, that aren't represented. But what, like Batman's just a, like if you look at these guys, right? Like you could you could probably see with your mind's eye where I'm going with this. But for me, I like another pass on this, not, if you watch the Spider-Man thing we were doing earlier, it's more like that. Uh, there, there, there's some questions that I still need answered in this that aren't being addressed, and I don't want to get stuck in the next stage until this one's resolved to a part where I can go, okay, I'm okay with going forward. So that would be the roughs. Then the next stage would be your line art, right? And we're going to do that today. That's what I would print out when I'm doing a traditional piece. So it's just a, a, a three pixel dead brush, which is a uh, the same as a micron pen, just as if you were to do tight line art with a micron, right? And then you would do five pages of that, and then finally, five pages of inks. Now, it might sound like you're doing a lot of work, like you're you're jumping around, you're not doing a lot of the same thing, as, as opposed to just sitting down and finishing what you're starting on. Some people like working that way. I work like that for a very long time. However, since I've made this switch to doing just a production workflow, I've noticed that um, my art is getting, uh, I don't even want to say better, but I'm finding shortcuts by crunching in time to get the end piece done. And we talked about this last week too, of getting away from it needs to be perfect and beautiful and the best piece I've done to just being done. And that's not to say that it's just scribbles and it's passable. You find shortcuts and ways to, to, to jump around this. Um, and we're going to get into... <laughs> I'm actually going to start uh, just working on the roughs right now while I keep, while we're, while doing this. It uns on me right here, telling me to keep drawing. I just noticed that. I was looking over at uh, some of the posters on my wall. Um, so if you guys, if you guys haven't heard of a guy named, um, <clears throat> oh man, I apologize. This is horrible. Me and names. Marzulo. Ram Studios. He's got uh, videos on YouTube. I, I can't remember. Maybe you guys will, you guys will be able to post it and let me know the first name here. I, I apologize, but <laughs> I've talked to you. <laughs> oh, I've chatted with you too. And this Rob, there we go. Thank you. Rob Marzullo. He actually just released a video a couple days ago talking about exactly this. And he does, um, from my understanding, a lot of, um, what's it called? Storyboards. That's, that's his source of income. Let me just bring all that down there. And uh, from what I understood in that video anyway, uh, what he was talking about was a lot of similarities where I was just finding like some parallels where it's we'll start working with a clock. <laughs> and this goes into sort of talking about uh, what I've been trying to do lately as well. <clears throat> is It's not necessarily the, the Pomodoro technique, um, but it's similar to that where really I only schedule myself for two hours of client work uh, a day unless it's on like a weekend when I'm not working and 30 minutes of personal stuff. So I bunch this into personal stuff. This, this is definitely client work. Um, but the, the client work that I have right now, um, and not to d demean somebody's commission or anything like that, but it's, it's a little bit more high priority. We'll just say, right? So you're just finding ways to, uh, manipulate your time, but also being aware of it. Uh, watch that video that he was talking about. I think it's very, um, it's well said. And he's talking about a lot of things in that that I think uh, maybe, I don't say amateur, but novice artists, artists, as well as people that are, you know, maybe you're just struggling with uh, the thing that I keep hearing a lot. I've actually gotten a lot of message messages over this last week of people talking uh, about, you know, coming home. Maybe you're a student. I had one person uh, that was a student uh, that messaged me. Uh, another person that's a father uh, and that works at a job he hates. <laughs> and uh, just 
always getting home and you're exhausted. I'm currently going through that too. You just get home from the day job and you're just crushed, man. And uh, I wish there was an easier way, and I'm still looking for a way. But anyway, uh, where I was going with that was just just being a little bit more um, production focused. I find that I'm able to get more done because I'm in a pipeline sort of thing. It's almost like bringing your day job in a way to to what you're doing here, right? So where I wanted to just quickly bring up too with like how concept art works, right? So for concept art, let's just say I had like a page like this. What I would do, and I was doing character design, and this is what I was doing anyway, and I was going to do tonight. But you just start doing shapes. I've done this on other videos where you're like, okay, what is the thing I'm drawing? Maybe it's like a uh, Momo from Jessup King, right? Still designing her. Maybe it's like a jellyfish, right? And you just start doing silhouette shapes like this. You just fill up a page. Maybe you spend like, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes doing a bunch of this. Then you go over it really quickly with white, right? And you just start to break out some of these shapes, and you're like, what's going on? Then you would lower the opacity and uh, start designing character stuff on top of that. But the point of that is it, it clearly explains and demonstrates that production workflow. Excuse me. So all of the, um, <clears throat> all of the uh, silhouettes for the character designs I would have, if my, if my boss was like, hey, John, can we see X design? Where are you right now? Maybe he just asked me 10 minutes ago and I can show him these silhouettes, but they still let you see uh, what's going on, right? So if at any time, and I know this doesn't really work for comics because comics, you need a full page. You can't just give in roughs and thumbnails, right? But that idea of you can always show somebody something along the way and how that translates directly to comics, because that's what I always like to come back to, is that it keeps your energy high, or at least I've noticed that it's kept my energy high, um, knowing that all I have to worry about in this case, right, is just the like for this uh, commission here, at right now what we're doing is just making sure my roughs are on point, or sorry, my line art, my tight lines, that's, that's the goal we're doing right now. I, I need to make sure that these are ready to get uh, tight line work and ready to get printed so that uh, whenever I'm getting back to this, I can start doing some actual inking. As, a, as opposed, and I just want to make sure that it's understood here where I'm kind of coming at. As opposed, the other angle is, all right, well, I can't do this until the weekend because that's the time I have available to do this entire piece. And some people really, like, really can knock out work doing that. I've tried it, I've tried it, I've tried it for years, and it's just been the last couple years lately uh, that I've noticed not doing that is beneficial to me. Uh, I'm able to do more work by working in the, these batches thing. So I, I just wanted to bring that up too because, I, I don't know, I think it's very interesting and very fun. Is there anybody in the chat too that works like that? Do you guys work, um, for those of you that are reading the Freddie Williams book and stuff or have heard of it, like this is nothing new, it's just, it's addressed in that book, his workflow. Um, but uh, do you guys work like that at all with your pages and stuff? Or do most of you work like how I would say a traditional comic book artist would work, which is uh, today's page one. So I'm doing all of page one, tight inks, everything. And then when it's done, it's done. And then we want to page two. And not that there's anything wrong with either, either modes at all, for sure. Actually, let me do this here for you guys. I always forget this. Let me open up the second window. I'm going to put it to the side so we can sort of see it. I apologize. It is 11 by 17. So some of this is going to be a little harder to see. But uh, once we get into the tight line art, I'll zoom in a little bit here. Uh, Donald saying, I work in batches on his webcomic. Awesome. And how's that working out for you? You used to? <laughs> you used to? Noah saying, uh, Noah does batches most times as well. So for those of you that actually do it, I'm, I'm very curious and interested. So what, what are your experiences with it? Do you notice? Like, I would say, too, I guess one of the negatives could be that, like, you don't have that if you looked around you, it just looks like a bunch of incomplete work, <laughs> right? Like there's still so much work left to do. Um, and that's, that can be a negative to some people for sure. Where it looks like you're just spending all this time, but really nothing's getting done. Well, that's, that's incorrect. Let's just back this up. Uh, Donald saying it worked well, but I didn't find the process was speeding me up any more than just doing a page at a time. Okay, that's fair. 
And that's what I'm talking about. At least uh, people are giving it a shot and seeing if it does work for them, right? Um, so I guess one thing that I would address to that, uh, maybe this is just more on my side where it's 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 focus is definitely a, a thing I would like to improve on. And it's just because a lot of it is monotonous. But if I know if I sit down knowing I have like a bunch of work to do, it's even harder to get started. But once you get started, or at least once I get started, things tend to speed up. So it could just be like a, <laughs> a mind illusion. Hey, Justin. Uh, Justin actually just got a Cintiq, everybody. So we can all uh, yell and, and be angry and be happy for him. <laughs> How's it working out for you? Got the Cintiq Companion 2, I believe. I think I saw a post on Facebook. Getting that old Windows 10 update. Uh, Donald, again. I felt like I got a lot more done, but time-wise it was similar. Right on. Right on. And uh, sometimes maybe just the feels is all people need, right? Sometimes you just need to feel like you're uh, making more progress and all that good stuff. So I'm just going to turn the, the body off there and we're just going to construct Batman's head. So I don't really draw too, too much Batman, but I like Batman to be pretty thick. Which I always felt funny. Like, to me, Batman doesn't... I never really thought too much about the character. I just like the idea of him being like that big, intimidating, you know, like sack of meat coming at you in the night, like that that scary, intimidating, like big brawler kind of guy, right? But um, when you think about it, I don't know. Maybe I'm alone on this, <laughs> but Batman's a pretty like he needs to be agile, right? Like he's jumping off buildings and he's doing all kinds of wacky shit. And for him to be like a big wolver, not Wolverine, well, I guess kind of like Wolverine, it doesn't really make too much sense. So I'm not sure about that head, so what we're going to do is we're going to do another one beside it. Uh, you're, uh, I, I'm sorry, S uh, stuff saying I want that book, but it's not sold. Really, eh? Can you not order it on, like, Amazon or anything? Do you not have that, or maybe eBay or something? That's uh, good to hear, Justin. <laughs> Matador is saying, hi, everyone, just sitting in my car waiting for the police because I got rear-ended. Can't see the video, but Picardo app would be lovely. <laughs> Um, well, I hope you're okay. <laughs> Why are you on here? Why are you listening to this while you're in a... <laughs> oh, man, that's, that's funny and sad at the same time. I'm not laughing at you, but that's... <laughs> I, I can't imagine that would that would be like what I would do if I was just in a car accident. I mean, I know you're just waiting around and stuff. Uh, it's funny. Well, thanks for making it. hope you're okay. Drawn a little bit more of his head here. Just trying to, you know, get the different Batmans out. Try them out, see which one we like. This one feels way better. It's a good enough, like I said, this stage here is not final at all. It's just meant to uh, move you on to the next stage, right? Okay, so we'll put that there for now. It does feel a little odd. I hope that doesn't uh, stick with you there, Matador. I'm working on a commission for uh, Lars, who um, visits us from time to time. I don't think he's here tonight, but uh, it's Batman versus Red Hood. So we're going to shrink up Batman's head here just a little bit. Let's see where you can put it. Yeah, it might be okay there. To explain, <laughs> uh, where do you live? If you don't mind me spying on you. Now we're gonna do like the the costume elements and stuff after. 
I actually uh, was rereading. I don't know if anybody even hears, even looked at it or heard of it. It's called. Uh, here, let me just pull up a picture for the, everybody else that's watching after the fact. Um. Ryan, oh, that's such a weird way of spelling it. I don't know if that's the right way to spell it. Okay, so that's it there. Studio, there we go. okay, there we go. So I've talked about this book before as well too, and I'll just bring it over here. Is uh, Brian Hitch's Ultimate Comic Studio or Ultimate Comic Studio? Now, it's not the best book. It's sort of like if you're to talk about all the elements of comic books from his point of view, which is fine. There's a lot of topics, but the topics range from like a page of content with words and then some pictures for each one. So it's sort of like a, a primer. Like somebody will talk about uh, vanish. He'll talk about vanishing points, and he'll just address it. But it's not like an instructional book. But the one thing, and I, I forget why I even bought it. I don't know. I think somebody recommended it to be honest with you. Uh, but what one would the one thing that was really cool in there that I enjoyed was, and you guys saw me do this before too, is having how he builds up his figures and all that sort of jazz where it's, uh, and I, I started doing it. I actually just did a quick test run with it with the Spider-Man there in the beginning of uh, starting with like blue line. Oops, my brush got away. Starting with blue line, um, building up a very quick sketch and then you just get graphite, you just build up on it a little bit more and it might sound like a lot of steps but the idea is to keep the energy high through this whole thing so you don't get a stiff figure and then you do like a final pass with like a red marker or a blue marker or a blue or a red and blue marker and you're just building on on it like that and then when you go to get the, the tight line art it's <laughs> all you got to do is just go ahead and pick the lines that you like uh, which is really what we're doing here and it's just adding another color uh, in there for you for um, for costume. That's the way that I like to look at it or try to try to tackle it. Let's get the chest cavity here. Let's get his collarbones going. I'll uh, see you later, Justin. God bless digital. No need to learn how the body is put together. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So as you can see here, I'm actually going to change something. If you look at the way his pecs were, like they're just gestured in there. Uh, but now that I'm in this stage, right, like just sort of trying to tighten it up, I'm going to do this, which is like to help sell that perspective that it's pulled back into the disc, or that it's it's a uh, uh, in perspective, right? There's shape to what's going on here, and it, it, it's always just building on and trying to stay observant to what you're doing. And we're going to flip it here just so we can kind of see what's going on. Little neck coming out there. Get a shoulder. So where's his hand going? Let me actually turn Batman off. So we can see what we got going on here. And this is kind of cool too, you guys, um, if you don't have access to two monitors, uh, doing something like this, because especially when we get into doing the tight lines, you can see I'm all in here, but when we got like this other monitor here, or other monitor, other screen, right, like, like check this out. I can still draw on this one, and it'll affect both. And I think a lot of people know about this already, but for those of you that don't, now why would you do this? This is great for, like, when we're going to do Batman's cape up here, right? Like, I can just look at, like, so quick to do the lines over there as opposed to on this screen where the detail's all in there. And if you're always in, in the same resolution when you're doing this stuff, uh, sometimes your art might get a little, like, you might be fighting it. You might find that you're fighting it a lot. Right, like, look how jaggy all <laughs> those nasty lines are going. straight line here now this stage too because he's got a gun or two guns I'm actually just gesturing in where his hands gonna be uh, we are gonna go into SketchUp to do those guns because I lack the the ability <laughs> to draw guns 
<laughs> uh, now this one too, I believe, is going to have a hand up like this. we can erase all this here just to help give the form and again I know he does have like a jacket I believe it is so a lot of this design anatomy don't gotta go too crazy if you guys remember what I'm trying to stick to uh, I encourage you guys to do it is not really worry about anatomy so much like look at how gestural the anatomy is here it's enough to know where things are without it going like okay well the bicep actually doesn't connect in there it doesn't matter I know this guy's got clothing on um, so that stuff is really just there for when like keystone areas for when we actually put the clothing on this guy actually we need to really turn this head here We should be looking at Batman as he's shooting him or shooting at him. Hey Rich, thanks for coming in, bud. Alright, so let's go ahead and keep going here. I'm just gonna move this over. We're running out of room. Try to suck in these abs here and flare them out down here. This groin is going to be there. <laughs> Tilt the pelvis away. And this will give us. It's kind of funny because the Spider Man picture we did sort of already had this, this like, this arch kind of going in here. Really want to have all that going on in there just so we can have the squash and stretch action going and usually it just helps to make it give the feeling that it's a little bit more dynamic you know because they're superheroes gotta have it and we can just look at the one down here, to see where it's at. We can actually rotate this too, if I want, just so I can see. All right, let's go ahead and change this side up here. So I really don't like the way that lag's going here, so let's go ahead and change the foot. Okay, so here we go. We got some. We got some relationship questions. This is always good stuff because this is the real talk. <laughs> uh, SCP. Oh, did I miss a question? Sorry. So our, our unsung is asking for him. I wanted to ask: Does your girlfriend support you drawing comics, or does she stay away from your whole art game? Well, she definitely supports me in general and everything I do. Uh, which is wonderful. I think uh, anybody that's in a relationship, I feel like when we start talking about this real talk, we need like, <laughs> we need some music. You know, like, son, sit down. We have to talk. I'm not upset. I'm just really disappointed. Like that sort of, <laughs> that sort of stuff. But uh, no, she's uh, she's wonderful. She supports pretty much everything I do that I know of. I've all got her bad habits, but doesn't ride me on anything like that. Uh... But does she, she does, I don't want to say she stays away from my art game. Uh, I just think she's not, uh, what's, a, what's a good way of wording it? She's not well versed necessarily in art. Meaning, that's not like a shot or anything like that. Just, if I could describe it, it's sort of like, I was listening to this thing, um, it was, it's a show, I don't know if you guys have listened to it at all. It's a, by Jerry Seinfeld, it's, uh, what is it? Drinking coffee in cars or something like that. I think that's the name of the show. And it's just Jerry Seinfeld. He goes around and he picks up comedians and they just talk about stuff. Which is, it's actually a really good show. I like it. And uh, he was talking to Jim Carrey. 
Oh man, I've... oh no, okay, there we go. It was Jim Carrey, and they just started going back and forth. And what Jerry said there was, you know, comedians only understand other comedians, and comedy isn't something you can teach. It's just something you have, um, meaning it's a way you see the world. And, and other people, you can't train it. You might be able to learn like some rhythm and beats and stuff, but you can't come up with that stuff on your own because you just you're just not attuned that way. Just whatever happened while you're growing up or whatever, who knows? But you're just not, you know. And, and I sort of agree with that when it comes to art. Everybody can learn how to draw, but there's those of us. And you usually can feel it, right? Like you got like, even if it's a small burning passion inside you to draw, even if the art sucks or nobody likes it, but you want to actually do this all the time. And the idea of, you know what? I might like to do this as, as my career or full time, or I would like to be an artist period as your job. You know, like that little sort of fire um, is what separates the people that want to just do this as a hobby and those of us that want to do it as a career. And if you want to just do it as a hobby, more power to you. I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just saying though that's the difference from people that are artists and aren't. So what I'm going where I'm really rambling with this one is I think she's in my girlfriend anyway, she's interested in what I'm doing with art, but I haven't seen her go out of her way to buy a comic book or uh, want to plan an extravagant trip to San Diego to go, you know, not like that. But some people have girlfriends that are into that, right? So in regards to that, then no, she, she doesn't. Uh, but yes, yeah, she does support what I do for sure. And if she didn't, then I wouldn't be with her. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. If you guys are with anybody right now that doesn't support your art, whether it's writing or drawing, get the fuck out. Run away, I don't care how much you love them, how much, whatever. If they don't support what you do, um, it, like, that's killing you, man. That's killing you inside. That's really hurting you. Because if you don't have an outlet, and your outlet could be art, meaning writing, drawing, uh, making movies, video games, right? You, you, you have a creative outlet. But if somebody is telling you not to do those things because you have life responsibilities or, or things, besides, like, actually, like... You draw till you die, you're getting sick, and maybe, I don't know. I don't know what the extreme case would be, but I, I personally, I would GTFO as fast as you possibly could. That's only going to come down to bite you in the ass, man. Because, like, and women, if you got a boyfriend that doesn't support what you're doing, you know, like, get out. There's Life's way too short for this shit, and there's tons of people out there that think what you do. Not, not that it's just cool that you do it, but they're just happy or they don't even care they're just like yeah do you do what you want to do that's the best stuff man and with all that right comes you're not gonna <laughs> i'm not gonna say you're not gonna be happy but very few people are gonna find the perfect person where it's everything that you do they love and all that stuff. i'm not anyway anyway i hope that answered your question uh let me just go up because i saw a bunch of um questions Unsung saying, does she go to cons with you? Yes, she does. I've only actually gone to one. <laughs> I went to one. I'm going to have a second one. Uh, I believe it's next, not this weekend, but a uh, weekend after she's going with me to that too, which is great. Um, yeah, it's good to have the, the support there. Just just having somebody there, even if you just need to use the washroom. You know what I mean? And it's such a menial task, task but just having somebody there, it's, it's like a friend, right? Which is great uh, if you're able to have that as well. Blueberry, oh my gosh, yeah, I haven't seen you in a very long time. Love the icon, miss that. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, has your girlfriend read your comic? Uh, the standard, I actually just got in the mail the, the collected edition Kickstarter thing. Awesome, turned out really good. Uh, I don't know if she's read it yet, but she has read, uh, I think, issues one to three. So, she's definitely interested in reading it and all that stuff. But again, it goes back to the, I don't think she's interested in comic books. So that goes more interested in just what I'm doing. It's kind of like your parents. <laughs> Most parents, right? They're just proud or they're just in, they don't, they don't have a yay or a nay. They're just like happy for you. And then you give them, you're like, here's my first published book. Look at it. And I'm like, yeah. And then they put it in a closet because it's precious. 
it's it's something special, but they won't actually read it, right? Whereas I think most of us comic book artists and stuff, where it's like if I made a book, I'd be like, oh, sick, man, you made that book. I would read that because that's what you gave me. It's not the, the thing. It's not the, the finished book. It's you, you participated in, in, in showing, in drawing, in telling something. That's what you want to show people. It's not the, oh, look, there's my name on a, on a piece of papered ink inked piece of paper it's at least for me that's i don't i don't care how many things i have with my name on it i want people to like like to friggin read it and look at the pictures in there that's that's what i'm what i what i'm trying to do with that stuff anyway 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 let's keep going you guys got all the all the sweet questions all right see you later stuff uh I, you're sad i always feel like i'm saying your uh your name wrong but yeah kick uh that com- homework in the ass thank you uh, SCP is saying, does she support you being vegan? All right, well, I guess I'll try to do a quicker-ish story here. Let me just get uh, these guys here. I just want to move them up. I'm trying to get them centered in the image here. My, my fear is that they're... Let's see if we can just... I don't know. I just want to make sure I've got the most real estate with these guys as possible because... Whenever somebody gets a, whenever you get a commission or somebody wants you to do stuff for them, uh, they want the characters, right? It's not that they're like I can make these guys very tiny fighting in a giant city, but who cares? Like the, this is what people are paying for, right? The money stuff, the good stuff. So we gotta. I'm just trying to make sure that everything's there. So I'm going to make a new layer above all of them, and so I can start talking about vegan stuff. Yeah. Whenever you guys want to talk about vegan stuff, you let me know. We'll talk. We'll talk. It's good stuff. Okay, so let's start doing some costumes. I gotta get my reference up because I don't know what Red Hood looks like. Cause I'm a bad. I like comic books, but I don't know comic. Books. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so when uh, when I met her, I wasn't vegan. I went vegan probably four months after we were dating. I, I believe. I believe that's right. The timelines are a little weird. Uh, In February, I'll be vegan for three years. Okay? So, uh, I remember watching something. (laughs) That's what got me to change. To change. I love it. To look at life a little differently. Just to have some open eyes. Okay? Uh, And I'm not going to start judging people in here or whatever. That's that's not... If it was... uh, I'll just outright say it. I've said it before. If it was up to me, everybody here would stop eating meat and just... Not even just stop eating, but at least watch some videos and try to educate yourself on on this or that but I don't want to preach I'll save that for somewhere else even though again I'm very I'm very passionate about that uh, so I watched some stuff and I was like I gotta I can't I can't I, I just couldn't I was like I knew this was gonna be tough and all, and all that sort of thing um, and I remember texting her I think it was like I don't know somewhere two in the morning or something something crazy uh just saying i just saw this thing it's blah 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 everything i just told you guys and uh and all that stuff um and yeah i didn't know what i was gonna do what i was gonna eat all that stuff i knew i had peanut butter and jam i could eat that so i was like until i figure out what the hell is going on that's all i've got um but then she told me that her and her brother they'd gone v- uh, vegetarian at one point uh maybe a few years back and I was like, oh, wow, that's, that's surprising. Why would you guys stop, you know? And I, I think their answer was it was just too hard um, and all that stuff. So, you know, okay, I get it. So uh, after that, uh, it just, things got a little weird. She went vegetarian, and then she went back to meat, and then went, I think, vegetarian again, and then vegan. I, know, I think she's been vegan now for about close to a year, I would say, or at least eight to ten months now. And uh, this time, <laughs> uh, it seems like it's going to last just because of all these new options and stuff we've been finding at the stores. And grocery stores now, guys, they're just loaded with stuff, like all kinds of fake meat and garbage that actually tastes legit. Now, I'm not just saying that because I want to spread my, my evil vegan propaganda. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, so we actually went to a uh, farm animal sanctuary during the summer, which, that was eye-opening, man. I had never been around cows or pigs or anything. I usually just drive by them on a highway <laughs> on my way to, like, Toronto or something like that. Um, 
but yeah, just hearing that, and then they tell you little stories and stuff. But the farm sanctuary, what it is, is it's uh, usually like lost animals, or most cases, some animals that somehow get out of or away from the, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, slaughterhouses or anything like that. Uh, horses from being, you know, broken in and all this horrible stuff at rodeos and stuff. But uh, they had like a lot of these things. One of the saddest ones was this one pig. Um, you know, you go up there and you're just like, all right, well, I'm going to go pet this. Dude, these pigs are huge, man. <laughs> huge pigs. And I'm like, I'm going to pet this pig. It's huge. I'm going to touch it, right? And, uh, you know, he's behind a fence and stuff. And I'm, I'm just going in there to go, hey, buddy, what's up? And something looked a little off about him. Like, uh, kind of like he was slow. Like, and I don't mean this in a, in a mean way or anything, but like, he looked like a retarded pig. You know, like something was, was off with him. So anyway, I went there and I was putting my fingers to the fence or whatever, and um, one of the people that works there was like, oh, no, no, you can't put your fingers in there. Um, what ended up happening with this poor pig was he was on a truck when he was a little piglet and uh, fell off the truck while it was driving on, on uh, the highway, and because of the impact, he got brain damage. And now, uh, I guess the pig just snaps from time to time and just, it'll, he'll, he'll bite people and stuff. But it was just like, I don't know, it was just, uh, it, was a, it was a weird thing, and Again, if you guys ever want to talk about this stuff, you guys just let me know in chat, and uh, I'll talk about it. But yeah, no, other than that, good to go. Uh, I guess the next crazy thing's going to be when one day if we have kids, have vegan babies, oh Jesus. <laughs> crazy. It's going to be great. going to be great. Oh, and I, I will throw this out there too, because this is the other side of the spectrum too, where I feel like maybe people get uncomfortable with this stuff. That's fine. If anybody out there, or if you guys watch or whatever, you guys are interested, or you got some questions, maybe you're interested in all that, by all means, shoot me a message. I would love to talk to you. Help you out any way I can. We can be vegan drawing bros and, and, and sisters. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, where are we going here? Perfectly saying, I'll read any comic that my draw my daughter makes with enthusiasm as a comic book fan and as a parent. But my parents were the we will put that on the fridge type of people that you're talking yeah, and I think most people are just because they're not they're not into art. That's all. That's that's all it is. That sort of thing. Uh was the farm the one Gary Yorofsky goes to? No, I want to go there. That's Sasha Farms actually in Michigan. And that I would love to be able to go there or not that I can't, but uh next year when it's warmer. I'm going to go over there. And if I'm lucky, I get to meet the legend himself. Say thanks. And I've always wondered, too, if there's something like, you know, whenever you get into this sort of th topic and all that, uh, I did bring this up last, I don't know, a few months back now, of just kind of going like, I would love to be able to do something art-wise to um, just bring awareness. So, like, some vegan artwork and stuff, right? And I don't know if, like, the vegan comic book or whatever. So, if I'm able to... I'm not saying I'm going to try, but if, if uh, I can get in contact with Gary when I go out there next year, uh, yeah, I'd love to see if there's something I could maybe help help out with art-wise. So, yeah. Um, Lenny Man is saying, how many weeks do you prep for a comic? Sketches, reference, character development, etc. Wondering. Awesome question. That is uh, uh, actually a really amazing question. So, it's a tricky one. I think most of it is based on uh, your deadlines, how much time you got. So if we were to go back and talk about, again, the um, the batching of what's going on, and I'll use this in, let's say we're doing Batman. Okay, we're doing Batman right now. Just say I've, I'm, this is legit. I'm working for DC and stuff. Um, so I have 22 pages a month to do. I doubt I'd be doing the cover because I'm a new artist. <laughs> so they probably have somebody more established on there so that they can still get the sales up. So knowing that, that most likely means that I don't have to worry about doing a cover in the mix. Uh, actually, let me turn this to multiply. See how that looks. Yuck. Okay, we'll stick it in there. So I'd have uh, 22 pages in a month. We'll say there's 30 days in a month uh, to do that. Most, from what I've heard anyway, editors, when you work for bigger companies, they'll provide you with any reference or materials you may need. So you can actually ask your editor, hey, bro, hey, sis, uh... What's Batman look like? What's the Batman we're using? What's the Batmobile look like? Uh, they can actually provide you with SketchUp files and stuff of like the Justice League of America's stuff. All these really cool things that can save you a bunch of time. Okay? Uh, so in that regard, 
that that saves a bunch of time. So now I'll actually talk about probably more like what you're interested in, personal projects. Right. So again, it, you have to figure out what what you're doing. Like, what's the time? What 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 are you trying to do with all this stuff? And uh, for me, let's say we'll use the Jessup King mini comic as a great example, or uh, web comic as a good example. So I know I want the first story, which is I believe 24 pages. I want uh, at least. I, ideally, I would like the whole thing done by the end of the year. Uh, a few things have come in between here. I don't want to ramble, but a few things have come in between that I, I'd be an idiot not to take for client work. Um, so I took those, so it pushed the deadlines back. But for writing and stuff, I try not to be too regimented. I, I don't want to go too deep with writing. I, I feel like the idea should be there, and the drawing is going to kind of get you going in a direction but for actual concept art and work uh, I like to keep it within a week um, and that's like and that depends on how much time I'm spending on something so usually when it's personal stuff the first day or two you could probably nail out what you'd need to be honest but I do find that if I'm able to give myself a little extra time and uh, come back to it that uh, I will get a better better result so if you if you're on a time crunch you're gonna have to do it probably most likely in a shot, uh, a week at best. If you've got a little bit of time, I would say give yourself a few weeks. Give yourself a couple weeks, or even if you got that much time, give yourself a month. Whew, imagine that. Um, but there does come a point when like your designs can get uh, like it's a little bit of overkill. Like you start to lose the design and stuff. Uh, a great thing or a great resource that I would recommend you check out if you're into that sort of stuff is uh, Fang Zhu on Facebook or sorry on YouTube. Wonderful, wonderful concept artist, and he does talk a lot about this sort of stuff of like turning around things and and treat it just like that. Treat it just like you're doing concept art, because that's what you're doing, right? Like if we're designing a superhero, like try going the video game route. I know that doesn't necessarily sound exciting to people uh, but try like how they design video games and movies like try to have your your uh, workflow be similar to that because you never know you might get something in it that uh, it's just a different way to work right because I think when we're doing comic book pages and stuff it's it's all like it's very formulaic of how you're doing stuff but design is so different because design is there's so much different things that incorporate design, color, tone, and that's not even just the shape and the silhouette. Like, anyway, there's a whole bunch of a whole bunch of stuff there. I anyway, I hope I hope that uh, helped you out there. Um, but uh, there is last thing I will say there is there there is a time that you have to be very aware of that you're spending too much time designing and not enough time doing any work. Like your story is just not getting done, and or your book isn't even being started yet because you're busy designing that's that's a, a something you got to be a little bit more conscious about and if you're able to do something about that that's that'd be great just don't get in the stuck or don't get stuck in a phase that I've always got stuck in which is development <laughs> it's a problem is I love doing that stuff and I could develop stuff all day I could just keep doing worlds and creatures and characters and places and stuff uh, but never tell the story and that that's a shame that's a shame uh, yeah this is uh, Batman versus Red Hood Unsung saying don't start talking about Jessup King this is the Batman somebody stream So here, I'll, actually, you guys can't even really see this. So we got this. Um, so we have our, where is it? Our Google SketchUp City. Uh, let me just turn is it these ones. So actually, we can turn off all the rough layers that we have of these guys, because this is pretty much, this is exactly what I would take into doing the final lines here. But so we've got a city in the background. What I plan on doing with that is most likely I'm going to be doing a bunch of paths in Photoshop just to put them on there. Maybe do some other things. I don't want to spend too, too much time on there because uh, what ends up happening, unfortunately, right, is uh, commissions are great, but when you're doing backgrounds, that's that's a whole other thing. But then when you're doing cities, it's like, oh, God, like, you don't want to spend too, too much time on there, right? But there's enough information in there that we can, you can see the stuff, right? Um, is, why does this look so washed out? Let me just move this up here. I don't know if it's... Okay. 
make a couple layers on top here. Multiply. Just, there we go. Darken that shiz up. Beauty. Okay, uh, Millennium Man is saying, I'm making a character model sheet for my main hero and just use the sketches I have for the supporting cast. Just wanted an idea on how much work I should put in things. And unfortunately, I don't think there's enough people that actually talk about concept arting, concept art for comic books at all or production work for comic books at all. I do think because comic books is so much work and if you're doing your own thing, I believe that just... It's you don't have the time, unfortunately, the resources really to really explore characters and design and stuff like that. So that's why I think a lot of people just sort of like, okay, well, I need a thug. So they just like, and I do it too. What's my template thug, right? As comic book artists, you need to be able to draw anything at any time, and that's scary because it's it's scary and it's not. If you've got a lot of the other way you can do this, to be honest with you guys, is <laughs> get a lot of art books. I love video game art books. Get some other like movie art books and stuff. So the next time, let's say you get a bunch of Star Wars concept art books, right? Next time you're doing a sci-fi book and you don't have time to actually design stuff, you can grab one of these books, flip it open, and just, I'll just call it what it is. Nobody else wants to talk about or say it and stuff, but just copy the design straight into your own stuff. Take from a bunch of different things. Don't just copy an X-Wing. <laughs> Right? Take some X-Wing, A-Wing, Y-Wing, B-Wing, Z-Wing, you know, like make the alphabet wing there and just sort of piece it together. But that'll save you time because, like, you've got deadlines and stuff. That's the other side of it, too, right? Where if you're just doing concept art, that is your job. You're just designing stuff. There's You're not animating or moving or anything like that. But with comics, there's a lot of – I was going to say give and take, but that's not even true. It's a lot of just ebb and flow and that – clock is always ticking always ticking and you don't really don't really have a choice here so we're gonna go a little bit later tonight just because i want to get the guns in here and i think that'll be an, a, a fun thing to show you guys let me just close that uh we're gonna save this as so i've got my roughs file here lars rough for a good buddy lars and now we're gonna put lars lines again the workflow here is, is pretty much I know, 29 Days till Star Wars. Oh, my God. And I, uh, I, did anybody else buy um, Battlefront? I picked that up yesterday. I played about a half hour. Didn't have too, too much time to play. I know it's not uh, the fighting or the shooting game everybody likes. I'm not a big shooter fan, but uh, what somebody said was, I thought was perfect. It's like, it's a very casual, approachable shooter. So, anyway. I use Pinterest for reference images. That's a great, uh, Pinterest is amazing. That is a great resource too, and it's free. As long as you got internet. So we've got all of this here. Uh, what I'm going to do is all this production work we've had to get up to this stage. I'm going to highlight all that, delete it, because we don't need this. Each file, you should try to delete everything you've had previously. That way you don't congest your file sizes. Okay, so we're going to, uh, oh, got a weird accent there. Grab all these guys, put it into their own layer. I'll call this roughs. I'm going to put all of this into its own folder. Call it BG for background. All right, we're just trying to organize this as we go. Keep the the bloat down on these things. Okay, so we're gonna make. Uh, well, I guess we're just making. Oh, well, we don't even need a new layer. So we're gonna hit Control Save. Get that going. Unsung is saying he'll murder me. But uh, did you get it for PS3, brother? Or PS4? Come on. I need people to play with. People to chat with. I just want to play some video games with you guys. And Donald's the, 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 the guy that's got all the ducks in a row. He's got no time for games. Alright, so let's load up SketchUp. Uh, Marcelo Castro Comics is saying, I collect all my reference for each project into an online service called mural.ly. That's M-U-R-A-L dot L-Y. Thanks, bud. I'm actually going to write that down to check that out. Always interested in this stuff. So, uh, mural dot L-Y. Mural.ly. Let's get to all this going here. Let's start using SketchUp. Uh, da, 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 da. So this could be a little weird. I uh, let's try it. Let's do it one monitor. Not everybody's got two. 
All right, I do this every time we get SketchUp on here. Always gives us a welcoming look, that approving look of Stan Lee. He's ready to get some 3D action going on. Uh, Perfect Noof is saying, are we talking about Star Wars Battlefront? Didn't know that release it. Uh, yeah, it did. It released uh, in Canada anyway yesterday. I was talking to uh, our good friend Will Robson. I think he lives in, in London or around there, somewhere in there. Uh, that comes up tomorrow. Or it might be now because of the time zone. I don't know. Yeah, if you guys got PCs, get that get that shiz on PC. I got PS4 action, so I don't know. I, I don't really like to game too much on a computer. I'm not gonna start QQing with you guys. Okay, so I've got a folder here that's off screen. Somewhere in here. It's uh, like a reference folder where I keep all my f uh God, where is it at? All my models and stuff, so I don't always have to look for things online. Desktop. I just want art. <laughs> Come on. There it is. There it is. All right. So we're going to scroll down here. You guys can't see it because I got some secret stuff in here. I can't show. Some top secrets. Some top secrets. All right. What are we looking for here? Hey, Jessup. What's up, buddy? Oh, yeah. Is that right? What did you do today? Did you have some adventures? All right, well, I can't f <laughs> Oh, my God. I'm looking for SketchUp. Oh, this is ridiculous. Oh, right. Sorry, sorry guys. Sorry, you guys aren't looking at it. Like, nothing's happening right now. I apologize. Just give us one second. SketchUp and models. There you go. Models, guns. Pretty sure I got a sick pistol in here. Yeah, this one's awesome. Look at that pistol. Look at that. Look how cool and sexy that is. Look at all that detail in there, too. So if we had, like, a shot where it's, like, real up nice and close, like, I'd, n like, I'd never be able to drop, but, like, come on. That's so cool. I like this, too. It's got, like, this other trigger in here. I don't even know if real guns have that. If that's for, like, this second chamber here. I don't know. That's the, that's the cat's business. So... Let's minimize this here. So this is, again, if you have two monitors, stuff like this is, is huge, but we're going to go ahead and, and pretend we don't. So what we have to do is look at our reference, which is the image we're drawing, right? And we have to figure out where the gun is. Like, how, how does this work? Right? So I'm going to start with this gun up here. So it looks kind of like he's... Uh, how are we shooting it? Actually... That's for the left hand. So that looks about right. So we're going to keep it here. Uh, da, 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 da. One other trick I do, and unfortunately, yeah, this is like a 600 DPI image, so it's going to be too big. But what you can do is, like, if you're working on a panel, you can actually check out the image size, and that'll give you generally the idea that you're going to want to work in, so you don't got to transform it so bad. But So we're going to have this, so we're just going to go to File, uh, Export, so 2D Graphic. Uh, let me just get this off here just in case here. And I'm going to save it in my temporary image folder. Pistol. That's his left hand, so pistol left. I'm just going to click on options. Actually, here, I'll show this to you guys, okay? Uh, so this might be something you guys are interested in too, workflow stuff. I keep a folder on my desktop called temp image folder. So I do a lot of stuff in SketchUp. Um, and I need a place to save it instead of just dump it on my desktop and clogging it up. I just dump a whole bunch in here and that way I can delete this from time to time without it getting too congested. But this is the thing. If you go down to PNG when you're exporting it, I like to just do a PNG or whatever. Go to options. You can actually change this sort of stuff here as well. Okay. Uh, so, you know, like your width and all that stuff. So I'm actually going to jack this up. All right. That's the maximum, the maximus right there. We'll see how big that goes. We'll click okay. Export. a little bit of time. Cool. All right, now let's get the second one. Now that one is a little bit more like he's extended. So maybe that way. I know like the angle's a little off. We can rotate it. We'll try that. We'll see how it goes. So we'll export 2D graphic again. So we're going to go pistol right. Now Manga Studio, or Manga Studio, uh, it's a little weird when you're importing images. For whatever reason, 
at least not that I haven't been able to see. If you guys know, let me know. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. But if we go up here to like file, go import image. Let's see here. Uh, pistol left. Click OK. Okay, cool. It worked. Never mind. <laughs> Whoops. What am I clicking here? Uh, pistol. Uh, all right. Are you serious? Okay, I'm going to turn this whole background layer off. I don't know what the hell's going on. It's really not this complicated. Jeez. So you can actually, this is pretty cool. You can have it with a transparent background, so it'll actually just like block out everything. So it sort of does like the wireframes that we would normally do anyway. Okay, so we're going to have him in here. Uh, this is his left gun here, so we're just going to control T to transform. Maybe. Try it again. Control T. No? Don't do it. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, let's right click and rasterize on this. Transform. Thanks. So here we just sort of have to like I well not eyeball it ish right. We kind of place it. I do have to redraw the hand, which is fine. Looks like it might be fine there. So what we'll do is this is another way you can see like those lines are just garbage, right? So I'm going to change this to gray, and we're just going to click and drag to duplicate it and change that top layer that we just did to multiply and we're just going to do this a couple times this will actually darken it up now you got to be a little careful because the line quality can get a little garbos here but it's not that big of a deal because we can always just go ahead and redraw over stuff right. so there you go good enough and it's funny you can see it's like it looks here and as you zoom out it gets like a jump in quality <laughs> Let's see what happens if we merge it all. Okay, so it is going to do that. Alright, so we're going to have to play around with that. Alright. So make a new layer, see if this works. I'll fret around with this on my own time. You guys don't need to see that. Okay, so we got that, and that's really what we're gonna do. We're just gonna get that, grab, we're gonna import the other one. File import image. And we're gonna go pistol right and do the exact same thing. Cool story. Rasterize that up. Control T. And you can see that angle that we have on this gun. Is not right at all. We want to go this way. I just want to compare it with this gun. That's the last thing we want is to break this illusion that uh, it's not right. if we turn the roughs off. So there we go, we got some guns. It just saves time. That's all we're doing. We're trying to just save a bunch of time. If we put the, man, this chair is really squeaky. There we go. Okay, so I guess that's going to wrap it up, you guys. Appreciate it. Uh, let's save it here so we don't lose any of our, our business. And uh, like usual, I want to say thank you guys so much for stopping by. Uh, we will wrap up with a song like we usually do. Um, but for those of you that uh, are here a little bit late or came here at the end, that's cool. This show is every Wednesday from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, next week, I will make a couple notifications throughout the week just to remind you guys. I'm going to try next week is going to be on YouTube, okay? Uh, won't be here on Picardo. I will log in here just to give you guys a reminder, like a little reminder message to let you know. I'm going to try YouTube out during this show and see... What's going on? See if you guys dig it. You guys let me know. Uh, I appreciate feedback, uh, so it's not just me. 
uh, saying what's going on. I'd love to hear what you guys think, if it's better for you guys, if it's more convenient, uh, if you get reminders, all that sort of stuff. Just let me know. Um, but don't worry. If you do forget and you do come in here next Wednesday, uh, I will have a, a little note in there or a little message I'll pop in to remind you guys. Okay? So, uh, yeah, until next weekend or next weekend, next week, keep reading comics, keep making comics, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.